Oh, baby. The Ruger LCR stands for Lightweight Compact Revolver. This has been a huge success for Ruger. Introduced in 2009 in just 38, they really had a lot of success because of the concealed carry market that uh, has just been a phenomena all over the country. And so after they designed the 38, they went ahead and produced in 2010 the 357 Magnum. And that's what you have right here. Built up somewhat over the original LCR because of the Magnum calibers. Because this has become so popular, they've also introduced a 22 long rifle and a 22 Magnum. In fact, the LCR is 50% lighter than Ruger's SP-101 in stainless steel. And because the weight is so light, when you're carrying this, you barely know that you have it on you. And that's really important because when you're carrying a concealed weapon every day, weight becomes huge. The LCR is a very unconventional looking pistol. And looks are not the only thing that make this unconventional. There are some really exceptional systems in this revolver that are advanced beyond most of your revolvers that you're finding on the market. Now it is a five shot, but when you talk about a very small pistol that you're going to carry every day, even in a lot of your automatics, a lot of times six shots are about all you're going to get. But remember that in 90% of the self-defense encounters where a firearm is used, the average rounds fired are two to three shots. There are times when you need more, and to be honest with you, I typically carry a Glock 26 with 10 rounds and an extra magazine. But I do carry a five-shot revolver a lot of times, especially in the summertime, when it makes it difficult to be able to carry something without printing. And you want to keep it really lightweight. But one of the exceptional things about this revolver is that it only weighs 17 ounces. But once you put this in a nice holster system, it is really easy to carry. Now the 357 Magnum is a renowned one-shot stopper. The velocity, the ballistics on this are just exceptional and proven. But one of the good things about having a 357 Magnum is that you can shoot 38 specials in this revolver. You can do your practice and your training with 38, which has a lot less recoil and is really more of a pleasure to shoot. To be honest with you, this 357 Magnum in this revolver, after about 25 rounds, you're ready to put it down. Just the muzzle blast of this thing will blow an attacker down whether you hit him or not. Now the glass filled nylon polymer system is not only lightweight, but it also absorbs the recoil. It comes all the way around here, and so when this weapon is fired, the recoil is absorbed into the lower frame of the gun. So that does aid in felt recoil. It has a really nice Hogue uh, recoil tamer grip. In fact, right at the back here, it's extremely pliable right here. So at the web of your hand, it absorbs a lot of the recoil. The grip itself has a good feel to it. It does somewhat feel the hand and yet remains small. Now the grip is relieved to be able to use speed loaders very easily. The cylinder latch is very easy to engage to release the cylinder. The cylinder pin is a titanium, which makes it really strong, but yet it keeps it really lightweight. The barrel is under two inches. It's 1.875 inches. And the sights on this are fairly easy to pick up. It is a notch at the back, but if you'll look, it has a hump and it drops down, and that allows for your front blade sight to come up. And it does give you a decent sight picture. But one of the things about this pistol is when you're shooting full house 357 Magnum loads, it took me a few rounds to really get a feel of this and to be able to get on target. I was shooting at a steel plate, and I'm gonna tell you, those first few rounds, I was not hitting it. Once I got this thing sighted in, it shot very well. And that's one of the things you need to do, especially for those who buy something like this and stick it in a drawer. A small revolver like this, you definitely need to master it. Now Ruger has done a lot of advancements to this pistol to make it easier for you to master. But I'm telling you, you need to take this thing out and you need to shoot it. And you need to shoot it on a fairly regular basis if you're gonna carry and depend your life on this revolver. There's a lot that goes in the LCR to keep the recoil management down. But even then, you've got a really lightweight pistol with full house 357 Magnum loads. After about 30 rounds, you start really dreading firing that next shot. But in a self-defense situation up close and personal, this will do the job. It does feature a full shroud around the latch pin, 
but it's very smooth and it has very smooth lines. It has, it's really a smooth design and this would be very easy and very comfortable to carry. The weight on it, I'm telling you, it's just phenomenal. The trigger is very smooth with no grooves. It is a stainless steel. But one of the exceptional things about the trigger is that it's a friction reducing cam in here. And what that does is it gives you a very consistent pull. So as you pull the trigger, it's a six pound pull and then a snap. But it's really consistent and really smooth. A lot of times there's a lot of stacking and staging with mini triggers. This one is really exceptional. And what that does is once you get your sight on target, it allows you to remain on target. This is double action only. For some reason, I just enjoy shooting this much more with one hand than I do a two-handed grip. You just let the recoil roll and it, then it just comes right back on the target. But the trigger is super smooth. It's super consistent. So you just pull it through and then you fire and it really stays on target if you do your part. The cylinder itself is a stainless steel and it's a diamond black finish, which is ultra tough. But the stainless itself is a carpenter stainless, which is the same steel they use for the 454 Casul, which has excessive pressure. So with this really lightweight frame, it's just great to have a really strong solid cylinder. But the upper frame itself is also a blackened stainless. Uh, you can see here at the barrel the stainless color coming through, but the frame itself here all along the top strap down here that holds the cylinder in place. This is all stainless. Now the basic LCR in the 38, the 22, and the 22 Magnum has what they call the monolithic frame. It is a aerospace aluminum alloy in this area with a stainless steel barrel insert and a stainless steel cylinder. Now the fire control housing though, and that's below here with the trigger guard and this area right in here is a nice nylon glass polymer frame. Now the LCR is a very unconventional looking revolver and it doesn't have the same lines even as the SP-101 or the Smith & Wesson little small 36s or model 60s or the 442, 642s. It's got a unique look to it. It's not only the looks that are unconventional. There are a lot of things about this pistol that are an advancement to many of your revolvers that have been from before this time. Now the LCR is double action only and that one of the things about having a small revolver especially with an exposed hammer is that you can bring the hammer back and you can get better accuracy. With a double action only you're having to pull the trigger all the way through. But one of the good things about this trigger is it's a six pound trigger and it's not excessive. Even women with fairly weak hands or the elderly can really master this pistol with just taking it out to the range. There are a lot of different revolvers which you grab hold of and try to pull that trigger and you just can't do it. Now let's remove the grip and I'm going to show you a couple of things below. The grip slides right off. This is the polymer fire control housing and it retains all the pins and all the springs and what this does it impacts the internals of the cam system and it keeps it really in proper alignment. There's not any wobble, there's not any looseness, and that adds to the uh, smoothness of the trigger and it adds to the durability. Here you see the spring working. Now what you can't see is the cam system working with the trigger, and we're not going to disassemble this all together, but this does allow you to see some of the internals and how compact and how well finished this piece is. Now with your key to the locking system, you have to remove the grip and this will allow you to lock the firearm and make it inoperable. And then to unlock it, you just go ahead and turn it. I'm not really sure why they put it under the grip. It's kind of an unusual thing, but that's the way it's done. Also, you can use this small screwdriver to remove their grip. But it makes it really easy to clean. So you can just reattach your grip, replace your screw, you can use the key. It's a very short screw too, so it's not going to take a lot to get this tightened down. Now there are two areas that you're going to always want to check to make sure they stay tightened. And that's the fire control housing screw that's right here, and the crane pivot screw that's right here. Uh, there's a specification to the foot pounds that this needs to remain at, but the big thing is you want to make sure that it's not loose. If you're really going to tighten it down, you got to be careful because you can't over tighten. The Ruger LCR is an excellent revolver, high quality from Ruger, but it's also a great lightweight option for concealed carry. 
Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Another exceptional feature about this revolver, it only weighs 17 pounds for a 350. <laughs>